there was an article in Barron's over the weekend on Ron Paul and the fact that he's been buying a lot of gold. And it was the, the title of the article is Candidate of Doom and Gloom. And it talks about Ron Paul's portfolio being a major bet against the U.S. economy, which, in fact, I guess it is. But it really doesn't point out that it's been a winning bet. I mean, betting against the U.S. economy has been far more profitable than betting on the U.S. economy. And rather than giving Ron Paul credit for having bet correctly, the idea is that, well, he's unpatriotic for betting against America. And in fact, the, art, the writer even uh, insinuates that the reason that Ron Paul voted against raising the debt ceiling was that because uh, that if the debt ceiling wasn't raised and we defaulted, that that would have been good for his portfolio of gold mining stocks. Well, the reality is the reverse. Remember, I was saying that if the government didn't raise the debt ceiling, that was one circumstance that would actually be bearish for gold. Uh, but that by raising the debt ceiling and, uh, and, and guaranteeing more debt, that that was the most bullish scenario for gold. And that's exactly what happened. We raised the debt ceiling and the price of gold is skyrocketing. So if anything, Ron Paul's vote against raising the debt ceiling was actually contrary to his own self-interest based on his investment portfolio. Because had Ron Paul been successful in convincing the other members of Congress not to raise the debt ceiling and to cut government spending instead, that would have been bearish for gold. Gold would have gone down. Gold stocks would have gone down. And Ron Paul's investment portfolio would have suffered. The reason that gold is on fire right now, the reason that gold stocks are moving up, is precisely because the debt ceiling was raised over Ron Paul's objection. Yet the writer of this article in, in Barron's somehow attributes Ron Paul's motivation to being uh, his own self-interest, and he put the interests of his country aside so he can vote against raising the debt ceiling so that his gold stocks would go up. It's actually unbelievable, and it shows that he's not even watching what's going on. He's not even looking at the fact that we raised the debt ceiling and the gold stocks are going up and the gold price is going up. But probably what's even more important about, or outrageous maybe, about this, um, uh, this article is the way it infers that Ron Paul has been a stop clock because he's been owning gold stocks. And I've had the same uh, allegation against me. Here's what it says here. This one, I'm going to quote. Fortunately for Ron Paul and his army of gold bug disciples, the stop clock investment strategy finally seems to be paying off. Finally? Finally? The article points out that Ron Paul has been investing in gold stocks for o over 12 years, you know, since the midnight and late 1990s. It hasn't finally paid off. It's paid off every single year over the last 12 years with the exception of one year, 2008. And in fact, the article even goes out of its way to mention how badly gold stocks performed in 2008. Who cares how badly they performed in 2008? Where are they now? This article is being written in 2011. We now know that the, that the losses in 2008 have been completely eradicated uh, by the rally. Not the case with the regular stock market. So. Instead of giving Ron Paul credit for having a foresight to have stayed in gold stocks for 12 years, instead he's saying, well, he was a stop clock. Well, what about all the other candidates who just kept their money in the S&P 500 over the past 12 years? Aren't they stop clocks? Oh, no, they're, they're prudent. Why? They've done the same thing for the last 12 years. The difference is Ron Paul's strategy has made a lot of money, and their strategy is not. So why is Ron a stop clock? for buy and hold in gold stocks, but nobody else is a stop clock for buying and holding you know, non-gold stocks. Uh, one of the parts of the article, he says um, that Ron Paul's uh, portfolio is a financial planner's nightmare. Right? Most pros say that gold mining stocks should be a small part of a diversified portfolio. Okay, well, it's a financial planner's nightmare, but it's actually been their client's dream if they actually were smart enough to have a portfolio like Ron Paul's. I mean, if you follow the typical financial planner, you've lost money over the last 12 years. What's so great about that? But here's where I think the article really 
uh, you know, is deliberately slanted. It has pot of gold, Ron Paul's top 10 holdings, and it shows the return over the last one year and over the last three years. Now, that is not really a great time horizon uh, to show the returns uh, because the gold stocks have really lagged over the last three years. Why did this Barron's uh, writer choose a three-year time horizon? Because a three-year time horizon is about the worst time horizon you can find looking for gold stocks because that starts in August of 2008, just before gold stocks drop 70%. So if he'd have chosen a five- or a 10-year time horizon, then you would have seen how phenomenally well these stocks have done over the long haul. And it, it, it wouldn't show that, hey, this is a stop clock who's finally having his day in the sun. He's had years, and in fact, he's had a decade in the sun uh, for this phenomenally successful portfolio. I mean, I bet the average American can only dream of having a stock portfolio that has done even a tenth as well as Ron Paul's over the last decade. And again, no credit, none whatsoever. Just try to criticize him, impugn his integrity, impugn his patriotism. The article points out that all of these positions have been in Ron Paul's portfolio since the late 1990s and that he added to his positions in 2003. So all of these stocks were bought earlier than 2003, yet they only show the returns for one year and three year. And I'm again, I'm going to mention these stocks. These are not investment recommendations, you know, for my compliance guys. I'm just looking at the article, the stocks that Ron Paul owns to show you uh, how biased. Okay, they showed him he owned Gold Corp, GG. That stock, it shows over one year, it's up 19%, over three years, over 17%. But if you go back to 2001, and of course he owned it, the stock's up over 1,000%. Now, why didn't they put that in there? Well, they don't want to show that Ron Paul's got 1,000% in, in Gold Corp. What about Barrick? They show that with a 12.5% return over one and three years. Well, over the last you know eight years or nine years or seven years, it's up 300%. Newmont Mining, that shows a 1% return over one year, 12% over 12 years. But over the since 2001, it's up 300%. Look at this one, Agnigo Eagle, 1% gain for the last year, 5.8% gain for the last three years. But if you go back to 2001, 700% gain. 700% gain for Ron Paul, yet they're not giving him credit for that gain. Agnico, Agni, Angelo Gold, AU, he's got that in there. They show a 2% return for the last year, 19% for the last three years, but it's 300% if you go back to early 2000s when Ron Paul owned it. But here it gets better. I am Gold, IAG, 3.6% return in the last year. Hey, 52% for the last three years. But the return since the early 2000s, over 1,000% percent for I am gold mag silver mag silver it shows a gain of for mag silver of 9.7 percent over three years but over the last eight years or so since he's owned it it is up over 1,000 percent same thing with pan american silver up over 1,000 percent since ron paul bought it but again over the last three years up just 4.7 percent and over the last one year, just 22%. Here's the best one. Silver Wheaton. Silver Wheaton, this is the biggest winner that they show Ron Paul having with a 49% return over three years and a 74% return over one year. Yet, Silver Wheaton, since 2001, when Ron Paul, and that's earlier than he owned it, that stock is up 2,000%. 2,000%. So Ron Paul has got winners in his portfolio. He's got in this list of Ron Paul's top 10 holdings, he's got three stocks that are up over 1,000%, one stock that's up 2,000%, the smallest gainer he's got, right? The smallest return Ron Paul's got on any of these stocks is 300%. That's his, those are his losers. Those are his dogs. The dogs of his top 10 are only up 300%. Where is the Dow in the last? It's down. It's down. So here is a guy who has hit it out of the park with just about every stock pick he's made. He's beat all the best strategists on Wall Street, all the top money managers, all the. I mean, you probably couldn't even find a hedge fund over the, that's done as well as Ron Paul. Yet, where, where is it? Where, this is an investment 
paper? Where are the accolades? Where's the, oh my God, the guy got it right. Gee, he really understood the U.S. economy. He knew the market was going to go nowhere. He knew the goal was going to go up. He had the foresight to put his money where his mouth is and go against all the conventional wisdom, do exactly what all the experts say not to do. He put all his money in gold, and guess what? Look at the phenomenal returns that Ron Paul made. That's what this article should be about. You know, let's compare the money that Ron Paul made with his investments to all of his opponents. I, I, there is no way that any of Ron Paul's opponents have done anywhere near as well managing their money as Ron Paul. Hey, maybe that shows, hey, if he knows enough about economics and the markets to avoid all the stocks that went down and just buy the stocks that went up, where the, the worst stock he got is a 300% gain. I mean, I don't even think any of his opponents, their best stock is up 300%. Chances are. I mean, maybe they got lucky. Maybe somebody owned Apple. But it was probably just a, you know, a small part of their portfolio or something. But that's what the story should have been, that Ron Paul nails it, that he hits it out of the park, that he beats everybody. Gee, I mean, give the guy some kudos. This should have been a positive article on Ron Paul because it was examining his investment strategy, where he invested his money. Can you imagine if it was any other candidate and they had these kind of returns? If it was not gold stocks, if they had just happened to pick the right stuff. Can you imagine the, the flattering article that would be written about a candidate whose top 10 stocks were up anywhere between 300 and 2,000 percent? Not a single loser, not one loser in the bunch, not even close during a period of time where the market is down, where the NASDAQ is down by over 50 percent, where the Dow is down, that he got all these winners and not say, hey, this guy really, really did a good job. 